Good afternoon, my name is Sylvain Bergeron. <laughs> um, I'm from Duma University. I'm from the Center for International Education and Research at Duma University. Uh, as you can tell from my name, uh, my name is French. I'm originally from Montreal in Canada, and I've been in Japan now, I think this is my 23rd year now. So it's become home. Uh, today's topic, the title as you can see, is Closing the Circle, a proposal to redefine the meaning and understanding of quality of education within the sphere of international education. Now before I continue, I wanted to ask how many in the audience today are involved with study abroad at their institutions? Excellent. Okay, okay that's fine. That's fine. Alright. How many are administrators? Okay. <laughs> how many are teachers involved with study abroad? Thank you. How many are both? Aha, uh -huh. yeah, that usually happens, right? Yeah, exactly. So when I travel to other countries and ask that question, it seems that in Japan, especially, we do both. We do the admin side and we do the teaching side as well. And in other countries, uh, they usually do just the one. And, and that's administration in this particular field. All right, now, also let me ask you this question to break the ice. Think about it this way. As consumers, okay, if you're about to buy an expensive product, for example, a flat screen TV, uh, desktop computer or just a nice little car. So we're thinking about you know an expensive item, and the person at the store at the shop tells you, well, okay, that's nice, thank you, but please remember that once you buy this, uh, sorry, but those periodical little repairs and uh, maintenance checks, sorry, there aren't any. How many here would buy that product anyway? Please raise your hand. Hmm. Yeah, you would. Oh, you take a chance. I, I, maybe I fix it. Right, you take, yeah, you, you take it yourself. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that's an interesting answer. Okay. Now the reason I'm, I ask you that question is to uh, reflect on that in regards to what's happening in our own institutions, and to hopefully carry this conversation beyond, above and beyond what we're going to talk about here in only 20 minutes, and also to take action, hopefully, for the benefit of your students. And the reason I called this lecture of closing the circle is because I feel, based on my experience of study abroad so far, that the circle is not quite closed. And you're going to see throughout the presentation that the metaphor of the circle is used throughout. And the reason I'm saying that is because um, there's a big part of what we do that, is, that I feel is missing. And perhaps this is also reflected in your own institutions. OK, and so using the circle as a metaphor, I divide today's, today's talk in three different stages, three different sections. And we're going to imagine drawing a circle as we're going through this, uh, this talk. So first section, or the first stage, is called drawing the circle. So here we begin to draw the circle. And this is representative of the pre-departure stage. The next one is the unclosed circle. This is what we're talking about here. This is key to this presentation. And we're talking about the post-return stage, represented by this unclosed circle. And based on the proposal that I'm going to make, uh, we're going to be closing the circle. And this has a lot to do with exactly what is missing, which is continuation after the students return from their study abroad experience. And this is how it is at my university, so I'll be very honest with you. It's still a work in progress. How about yours? All right. Now, in terms of supporting what I'm talking about in regards to quality of education from the EFA, Education for All Global Monitoring Report of 2013-2014, which is published by UNESCO. Uh, if you like, let's all read it together, all right? Yeah, ready? Improving all aspects of the quality of education and ensuring excellence of all so that recognizable, sorry, recognized and measurable learning outcomes are achieved by all. And so, in terms of quality of education, also what we can say is that measurable, we can also add sustainable. And achieve, we can also add main, maintain, continue to be main, maintained. So the theme here uh, at the root of this topic is really continuation. That's what we're concerned with because of the need to close this unyet um, closed circle. Right. So this is a, an important reference for you. If you'd like to make it. Okay, now drawing the circle, the pre departure stage. Now, all of us who are involved with study abroad 
programs, uh, we'll understand that the pre-departure stage is the stage that is the, probably the busiest, the most demanding, and where we need to invest a lot of time, a lot of effort, and on the student's part, and the student's parents' part, uh, financial commitment as well. We spend a lot of time here. We start with study abroad, fair, and so the promotional part is a big investment here. We spend a lot of time doing that. So there's a, there's a study abroad fair, and everything that's included in that, you know, pre preparing for the study abroad fair. You also need to promote, you, know, you need to promote throughout the school that this event is going to happen. It's usually once or twice a year. Um, we try to do it in April at the start of the new school year so that uh, the freshmen, the first years coming in, are immediately introduced to these um, opportunities that are available for them to study abroad. So everyone's involved, mostly the International Center, staff and teachers, and staff and teachers that are involved with English language teaching because most often the students who will be interested in this will be students who are also interested in learning English abroad. But not limited only to people, I'm sorry, to students studying English. This is open to all faculties. Okay, and then we go to the unclosed circle, the post-return stage. Now, this is the one that I think we need to stop and reflect on a little bit. What happens here is, as you saw in the pre-departure stage, we're investing a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of energy to send the students abroad. And once they do, and once they come back, most often, as, if, as, if, as it is the example of at the university where I'm at, there's, there's no follow-up. There is no follow-up. And this lack of follow-up is this unclosed circle that I'm referring to. So for example, they've had a wonderful time, and as you know, um, or as you may know, as they come back, their level of motivation is extremely high. They've had an experience abroad, they've had all sorts of uh, adventures, and they've been introduced to English in various ways, uh, both in and outside the classroom, excursions, and so on. And they come back, and it's not just an, an intellectual or linguistic thing. You can see it in their aura. You know, they come back different people, and they're uh, yeah. You just see it. You, they, they come back. They're they're highly motivated. Um, they 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 they're, they're bright. They're cheerful. Uh, they're, they come back with lots of stories about their their experiences abroad and so on. But then the question is, or the question that will be posed after that is, okay, now I'm back. Uh, what can I do to continue to maintain what it is that I've accumulated while I was abroad? And sadly, the, the answer is there is no um, after-sales service, if you like, uh, when they come back. So they ask, well, where can I study English? At the university, that is, because they're already on campus. So where can I study English? Where can I continue to level up my English language ability? Uh, is there some is there something on campus that I can do? Is there, is there somewhere that I can go? Is there a teacher or teachers available to help me continue to maintain and build up on what it is that I picked up while I was abroad? So that is often the question. And unfortunately, as, as is the case at our university, um, up until now, uh, that support system is not there. Okay. Now, how about in your university? I'm just going to stop here, and I'd like you to maybe reflect and think back on your own institutions. Um, how many of you, as I continue with this, do have a follow-up uh, program or system already set up? Okay, all right, yes, so, so, all right. How many of you are in a similar situation to mine? You come back and you think, of, yeah, all right, so about half and half, right? Okay. But, all right then, so we're looking at, in the next section, we're going to look at some of the uh, institutional uh, boundaries, as Brian mentioned in his uh, talk earlier. Uh, some, of the, uh, some of the obstacles, some of the challenges that uh, not only the students are faced, but those of, us, those of us who have passion and who want to do something about it, and 
we wish, in order to meet the interests and the needs of the students, to do something about it. You know, so we say, all right, it's obvious they've just come back. We want to help them to continue to build and maintain their language ability. Why not create, you know, a global lounge or a language lounge or something of the sort where students can come together and it doesn't necessarily have to be just English. And so a few well-intentioned teachers and staff members will come up with this idea and then in the next step or the next level, this has to be introduced at the committee level. And there are many of those and it's very uh, time consuming. But to introduce you to some of these challenges and obstacles, let's have a look at them together if you like. Well, as we're introducing our ideas to, to form these types of lounges and so on, well, the first thing that's going to mention often is there's no money, there's a lack of funds. So without funds, we can't start a new project, something like that, particularly. Another one would be, well, we don't have enough people to do this. There's a lack of manpower, so how, Who's going, to, who's going to organize and arrange and uh, look after this center or lounge if it's created and once it's created? There's a lack of space. Where are we going to do this? There's, there's nowhere to do it. You know, there's, um, then people start looking around classrooms that may be free, but then the place might not be quite right because uh, if we do activities or if we use media and so on, then we might be disturbing others around us and so on and so forth. So lack of space becomes another one of those challenges or obstacles. Another one is who will be in charge? Who wants to step up to the plate? Who wants to be in charge? Who wants to manage this? Is it going to be just one person? Is it going to, is it going to be more? Do we need to create a working group around this? <laughs> Who's going to be in charge of the working group? Uh, meetings, how often, you know, and it just goes on and on. Staffing, who's going to staff it? Is it going to be the folks in the international office? Will it be the English teachers? Will it be the students? If they are students, will they be TAs? Will they be volunteers? So who's going to staff this when? When will be, uh, when will be the uh, staffing hours and who's going to take charge of the scheduling? The time commitment, okay, so again, how often, who, when, how long, and so on. Who are we going to target? Who will be the target population? Are we just looking at students who have just come back from studying abroad? Are we only going to aim at students who are interested in learning English? Are we going to target students who uh, could... We have, maybe also in your universities, you already have uh, resources through the international students that are already there. So, shall we invite the international students to join in? Because the international students, what's interesting about them is that they have a wealth of knowledge, experience, and resources to provide that could also benefit our students, and not only in English. And as you know, in our universities, they can learn more than English as well if they like that. So if students are from Italy or, or Greece or France and so on and so forth, well, if they're learning those languages, whatever language they're learning, then they, they don't have to be limited to just using English within this lounge. So then it becomes a global lounge. It's not just a ESL, EFL, ELT type uh, arrangement anymore. So this is the target for population and language. Now, as you're going through the different committees, from level to level, well, uh, depending on who's chairing this, who's running this, well, there might be different visions. There might be different agendas. Uh, some people who uh, may want, there might be issues of legacy also. Well, if I do this and once I, I retire and, and leave the institution, well, you know, this is something that I might be remembered for. And so strongly, I would like to, to push my, my vision and my agenda because uh, in my position, this, uh, this is what I would like to do. But then you have different camps. And it just goes on and on and on like this. And so it's very hard to, to get consensus, which is what we need at this level, to be able to move to the next level. And then we have committees and consensus, of course. So this has to go through various committees, and you have to get consensus at every level to eventually get the final decision and the go-ahead to, to do this. So as you can see, 
the challenges and, not, and the obstacles could be many. And this means this is also very time consuming. And if we remember who this is for, this is for the students, for the benefit of the students to meet their needs and interests, well, I think they're losing until something concrete is done, they're losing out. Nothing is being prepared or organized or done for them. And so here we need to think about how to close the circle. Okay. So, so far we've seen opening, opening the circle by, first of all, starting to draw the circle, which was we start reflecting on everything that's involved in the pre-departure stage. Then at the next level, uh, semi or yet unclosed circle, which re represents the post-return stage. And now we're at this level, the continuation stage, where we need to think about what can be done to close the circle to benefit our students once they come from studying abroad, but also this could serve as preparation before they go out and study abroad as well. So we're looking at empowerment. The, um, the list of possible obstacles and challenges um, are very far from doing this, empowering the students. It, it just retards and delays um, the possibility for the students to have access to some form of lounge or some form of uh, forum where they can come together and continue to maintain and build their, their skills. And so here's a paradox. So we've been talking about closing a circle, but here the paradox is we're going to close the circle by in fact opening the circle. And this is going to be done by the students and for the students. So what's going to happen is, uh, uh, similar to what you were saying uh, earlier this morning, we're going to try to bypass these institutional uh, obstacles by involving the students directly. And by doing that, then we don't have to go through all of those stages that we saw earlier. So we're able to uh, save a, a lot of time. And we're asking the students to uh, arrange and organize and manage this by themselves. And the teachers or the people involved at the international office can take on a supervising role from a distance. And so by the students, for the students is the idea. And so in terms of ideas, in terms of planting seeds, uh, when we look at what's happening at our school right now, I'll just give you an, an example. And I hope that if you're in, also in a similar situation, this may help to plant seeds of your own wherever you are. So the idea is that um, we started, uh, two teachers that felt very passionate about this, um, we asked some of our students who were very keen on the idea of getting together and creating some sort of a lounge to come together at lunchtime. And what we do is we get together at lunchtime, and we have like a, a lunchtime gathering, and where we can use uh, English. For now, it's English. In the future, it could be more than just English, because some of us speak more than one language or two. And we've identified, thank you, we've identified students with leadership, and students who are motivated enough to pick up the torch from, from where we'll be leaving, off, leaving it off for them to to carry on with. And then what we're realizing is through this action, there's a core group being built. And then in the future, it'll be interesting to see where we go with that. And then eventually, we might be able to have a core group strong enough to bring it to uh, another level, which may be something which will become more, more formal and um, better organized. But for now, we're looking at it from the grassroots level. All right. So the idea as we wrap up is that when we look at it from this perspective, when the students are looking to invest in time, in money, and also when we think that the, the, some of the financing for this also comes from the parents, to have a win-win situation, we need to be able to close the circle and offer them a full range of services, tools, and support 
because we need this continuum. We need this continuation to close the circle and offer them something which will allow them to continue to build on what it is that they're picking up when and also before and after they are involved in studying abroad at the uh, university level specifically. Thank you for your time, everyone. Thank you.